uh, had a question about how do I get my kites to fly more vertical. In fact, uh, if you look at some of my uh, videos, my kites fly almost perpendicular. And the way I do that is I've got uh, a design that I use. I fly Delta kites. Uh, they're, to me, they're, they're the easiest to construct. And I made some special mods to the design I started out with. Now, the, the design I started out with was from uh, a guy named Dan Lay. I think he's an Englishman or a Brit. Uh, not really sure on that. And in the description of, of my video, I'll put a link to uh, at least, if I can find it, it's been so many years ago, uh, one of his basic designs. And he had, a, a, I thought, a really great design, easy to construct, and then over time, I've, I've modified that to more suit my needs. Well, anyhow, size don't matter. Uh, this is my 12-foot uh, wingspan, modified Delta. And what I've done over time and just through experimenting and learning, is I found that if I can get the uh, the bridle point, this is called the bridle point, to be close to a certain proportion of the center lift or the center pressure of the kite, then it will fly more vertical. Now the problem you've got though is on your bridle, uh, that when you construct your, your bridle for this piece here, then it's critical of where your, your uh, attachment point is. The further back your attachment point, the more the more the kite will catch the wind and go up, but it also creates more drag. The closer to the front, you move the bridle point, then it angles the uh, angle of attack of the kite down. Now you can go to a certain point on your bridle point where you've exceeded like the center of, of lift or center of pressure, center of gravity, and it will cause the tail to spin out and stall. And sometimes it will cause the kite to overfly, actually overfly the top of you and then eventually crash. So, the rest of this video, I'm going to try to explain how I've made a, an automatic adjustment based on the wind speed that we get. On a light wind, you want your bridle point to be more backward. On a higher wind, you want your bridle point to be more forward. And so I've got a device that I experimented with and built that will let that vary. Now, to begin with, this is called the keel. Let me zoom out a little bit. This is called the keel of the kite. And if you look at most uh, construction of uh, Delta kites, the keel will actually come down to a sharp point. And that sharp point is where you attach your your line or your string uh, I'm gonna call it point of attachment well anyhow you'll notice what I've done is my keel comes down and I've got a bar that runs across the bottom of it it doesn't come down to a sharp point I've got actually you know I've got a pretty good gap to wherever the projected center of uh, <laughs> At the bottom would be whatever you call that. <coughs> and this allows me then to vary the attachment point of my string. And so by sliding the attachment point of my string, I'm actually varying what we call the bridle point of the kite. The far again, farther the back the attachment of the bridle point is, the more angled up, up, your kite's going to be, the farther forward of your bridle point, 
the more angled down your kite's going to be. And so there's like a sweet spot. Actually, there's several sweet spots depending on the wind you have. Uh, really light wind, you want your attachment point to be farther back or your bridle points to be farther back. Uh, heavier wind, you want your uh, bridle point to be more forward. This piece through here is nothing more than an eighth an inch or a quarter inch piece of dowel rod and then I just duct taped to the bottom of the keel. Uh, you notice this string's attached and, and the reason this is mounted quasi permanently on my kite is that if I've got a constant wind, uh, i.e. not gusting too much, if it's pretty constant, then I, I mm -hmm. simply just adjust my bridle point using this string. Okay, so here's the other device. It's spring-loaded. And it attaches on the bottom of the keel with just a simple uh, piece of wire I've put on both ends. And then what happens is when you get more wind, you'll notice that the uh, bridle point is automatically moving from the, the back toward the front. So it's automatically con compensating from a more lift, more drag, to less lift, less drag. So as you can see, it's moving the brighter point forward, the more lift or the more gusty wind, whatever, all the way forward. So what happens is, if you get a big gust, it's gonna snap like that. And in fact, if you got a real big gust, you'll go past the point of having any lift at all. So it will automatically just kind of compensate. So if we look at the designs of all Delta kites out there, all of them will end up with a keel that will come down to a point and then go back up. Of course, the, the front of the kite's this way. So they'll always have a keel that looks like this. And then so the uh, attachment points can be down here somewhere. And the reason they do that is they optimize or try to optimize for their given design of the kite, uh, what they consider to fly best under average conditions. And I don't know what that means to them, but uh, so what I, I've done is you know, I've taken and calculated the uh, attachment point of the keel. And then what I do is I add about one inch in front of that point, say here. Then I'll go back three or four inches to a point right here. Then I'll simply cut my keel out this way. Probably draw that in dashed lines so break up the difference. So that's the way I determined where I want to go ahead and create my modified keel. All right, so now that we've uh, determined for our given size of a kite, uh, the dimensions of the keel that we want. And if we're flying in a um, gusty environment, we simply attach this to the bottom of our keel this will be our attachment point of our string. Then as the wind increased, the gust increased, it's gonna move our point of attachment from behind more forward. If anybody's interested in the uh, actual design of my 12 foot kite, uh, here's the original design and here is a uh, printout of the dimensions uh, each dimension like for example wingspan is designated by 
uh, an alphabet or something. So kite wingspan is 144. It's designated by an S. So if you come over to the drawing, then the wingspan is the entire length of the kite. Of course, I'm only showing half of the kite here. So half of the wingspan is one half S, or in this case, a half of 144, which would be 72. We come over to kite length, which is C. Its length is 72. So the length, top to bottom, is 72. Now, the most important and critical dimension is really this kill just because of what I introduced is the variability of the point of attachment. So I've got all those critical dimensions labeled as B. So if you come over here and look, all the critical dimensions for me is, is, is B. So I'll kind of slow this down, let you read top to bottom, those measurements. And this, again, this is for a 12-foot um, wingspan. Kind of show you what that looks like on paper. 